2023. I'm really excited for this session because obviously we've got John with us and he's going to be sharing all the new things about LinkedIn and he really does have his finger on the pulse with these things. So this should be very, very good. So you should all be able to see me sharing my screen. Yeah. Um, just for those of you who may not know, it is possible on, on your screen that the slides are really big and my photo and everybody else's photo is really small. If you actually take your cursor and put it between the two, you'll actually see the cursor change and you can slide it along and the slides will become smaller and the face will become bigger. So it's a nice thing to do when we're actually more chatting and looking at slides rather than, you know, the slides being the main thing. So that's just something you might want to try doing. Um, so welcome to the Friday Networking of the Expert Economy. Um, we um, meet every Friday on a fortnight. Um, and we, we meet at 12.30 in the UK. I know we've got quite a few international people, so that is a different time for you. <laughs> um, but our idea is that it's to be a Friday lunchtime, like you would do if you were in the office, um, perhaps go out for lunch with your colleagues and kind of wind down for the week, have some social time and reflection on what's been working and what's not. Um, we have three breakout rooms each session. So we have one starting at 12.25, so you can get chatting and, and networking immediately um, as people are sort of drifting into the networking events um, and then we do the introduction we have another um, breakout session we have our main talk and then a breakout session after that as well um, in those breakout sessions you have a chance to pitch your business to everybody and some people I will pick on um, if there's time and say do you want to tell everybody here what you do and um, we always aim to have a guest speaker give a presentation and it's always thought-provoking content for us as business leaders, as um, expert entrepreneurs, because that's a very different approach to most other types of businesses. Um, and that's what we're about, the expert economy. So we're here to, to get you content and um, it's really gonna help you benefit, benefit your business as an expert entrepreneur and is applicable to you, not million pound businesses, which have got a different, it's all very different. So who am I? I am Naomi Johnson. Um, I am the author of three books, uh, Grassroots Screen Shoots, and um, Lot to Put on Your LinkedIn Profile, and a book called The Expert Economy. So the first book there, Grassroots Screen Shoots, is about how I started up a coaching business in 2005, and how I went belly up um, in 2008, and all the lessons that I learned in doing that, um, and all the things that the, the, the people who are qualified to stand on stage and uh, share their wisdom they they literally assume that you know this stuff um so it's some really kind of uh wisdom directly and especially for expert entrepreneurs um building their business and getting started um and then obviously there's the what to put your linkedin profile and the expert economy is my step-by-step -step methodology for positioning yourself as the go-to expert so um what is the expert economy well, our goal is to have you set up your business so prospects come to you pre-sold and ready to buy, trusting you as their expert. What we want to see you doing is billing for 70% of your time, studying your subject for 20% of your time, and 10% of your time is managing um, all the different pieces. Now, I know we've got some people here that are perhaps in the investor field rather than in the um, expert field, so just bear with us here. You're very, very welcome. Um, so when you're selling your expertise, it can get really easy to start marketing all of the time and actually spend 70% of your time marketing and never actually be that good at it because it's not your profession, it's not your skill, um, and you can easily get bent out of shape doing that. Um, and that's actually where a lot of people have a mental health crisis, to be fair. Um, so what we're about is getting you doing your what you're good at, being at the cold face of the industry, doing the brilliant work that you're supposed to be doing. And then 20% of that is, you know, that natural interest in the subject to study it, to want to be better at it, to read blog posts about these things. And inside of that equation, you might look at that and say, huh, OK, so where is the um, sales and marketing in that? It's actually inside the 20%, because when you are doing 10 sales calls per month or per week with ideal prospects, you are actually at the cold face of your industry. You are actually learning about what problems your clients have and how those problems are showing up. And when you're doing that, you are a, you are inspired. A, you're gonna you're on track for winning the sale because you're doing the sales call, but also you're um, developing um, insights for content that you can be sharing as blog posts, as social media posts, as podcasts. 
and different things like that. So the two go together because you are doing the selling and you're doing the marketing, but you're doing it from a really authentic place that's hopefully enjoyable because you're right on the money with your topic talking about the things you love to do um so that's why we put it that way around um because a lot of people sales marketing is just like ah but when you're coming from a really general place of just um i want to share this insight i want to talk about this you are positioning yourself as an expert um and if you're inviting people onto sales calls you've got that connector there to, to win clients so who we are, our vision is to have experts contributing meaningfully in the world and getting paid for the value they create. Um, and our mission is to develop experts into highly skilled entrepreneurs capable of transforming vision into action and making an impact in the world. And our values are be real, create space and come in service. What do I mean by that? What I mean is you don't have to show up here and pretend you've got it all together. We understand together what it's like to sell your expertise, to sell a service, to say, I know how to fix this. Please pay me money and I'll help you. Um, and all of the different things inside of us that actually saying that can trigger um, and that life doesn't go perfectly. Um, so you can just come here, stay, be real, whatever challenges you've got going on. And we will accept you as you are and know that you also can get up on stage in five minutes time and deliver the best presentation and deliver incredible results for your clients, no matter how you're feeling. Um, so be real, tell us what your challenges are, and we will create space for that. So that is to help you, um, and that is also to just, uh, you know, not try and change it, just go, yeah, I get it, I hear you, I see you. Um, let's let's see what we can do um, and come in service to try and help each other the same way you would hope someone would come and help you. So um, for those of you who haven't got a copy, you're very welcome to download a free copy of my book, The Expert Economy, on my website. Or if you would like the physical copy, which is very attractive and I like very much. Um, I think it's under there, actually. I won't pull it out. Um, you can also buy a physical copy on the website as well. well good to see you again, Naomi. And uh, this is, what, the third or fourth time I've done this with you? Yeah, maybe so. I would want to go like almost six, to be honest. It's okay. a lot of times. So I love to start every new term hearing from you because so much changes. But let me go ahead and share my screen. It's good to see everybody this morning, my morning. Very early morning, yes. <laughs> I had a really early morning because I uh, still had to wrap some things up in terms of what the content I was going to share with you. And... You know, four or four o'clock, four a.m. But I, I I generally get up at five every morning anyway, and uh, and along that line, I just had a call yesterday with somebody, and somebody said, "Why wow, you get up early like that?" And I said, "Yeah, but I also go to bed early." Uh, I've learned over the years, and that goes back to and Joanna when we were talking earlier about having a coach or having a mentor. A coach of mine forty years ago told me that if you start your day two to three hours before your competition you will gain a sustainable competitive advantage and I just tried it and uh, he was so right on I had a very successful first career and then second career and I'm in my third career now but uh, it also means burning the candle at both ends is not healthy right? it took me a number of years to learn that but uh, let's go ahead and just get started and I will <clears throat> be glad to take questions <clears throat> during the presentation. I have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, and, and thank you for giving me a little bit extra time, and Naomi. But LinkedIn. And I presume everybody here is on LinkedIn. Although something I saw about six months ago from LinkedIn is that 99% 99 of LinkedIn users use it ineffectively. That means only 1% use it effectively. And my goal in my third career is to help move, move people from the 99% to the 1%. And we're having a lot of success doing that, but at the same time, it takes a little bit of work. The thing that's really, to me, exciting about LinkedIn are all the changes. I mean, there were a substantial number of changes with LinkedIn last year. And I'll just say this, if you're still doing things the same way you were six months ago, uh, you're probably costing yourself money and uh, and and definitely opportunity. And in this discussions, recent discussions I've had with 
some people I'm connected with. And again, I <clears throat> I don't I don't propose propose myself or uh, I'm a proponent of I'm the smartest person around. I'm never the smartest person in the room, but I hang out with a lot of very smart people and uh, take what they, uh, a couple of folks are directly connected into LinkedIn. And uh, that's a cool place to be, I guess, but it's also a responsibility. So just understand the change is coming at an increasing rate and LinkedIn is obviously growing. I heard just yesterday, it's approaching 900 million users worldwide. Uh, that's a lot of folks. So I, you know, I won't go through all this, but you can go back and review the thing. I've been around a long time. My nickname is the old dog with new tricks. I've been in business over 40 years, and uh, I am so excited about working with small business because I own a small business, <clears throat> and we are the net job creators in the world's economy, I believe, and it's certainly not the larger corporations. Look at what's going on in the tech space right now. I just heard, saw that uh, I guess Amazon is laying off another 10,000. And uh, well, I can't even comprehend working for a major corporation. But anyway, that's who I am. And what I'm going to share with you today, but I don't know uh, how much of you, uh, how many of you have seen this. And here is a link, uh, a friend of mine in, in, in uh, originally from the Netherlands, now in Spain, uh, Richard Vanderbloom, by the way, you definitely want to follow him on LinkedIn. He is the real deal. And his consulting business, Just Connected, uh, does an update on the LinkedIn algorithm every fall. And they just published it last September, late the end of last September. And if that link is not clear, I'll, uh, and Melanie, I'll, I can't copy from the uh, PowerPoint into uh, into the chat, but I'll be glad to get that to you. This is a, I think, a must read for anybody who's using LinkedIn. I'll share with you that it is not for the faint at heart. It's about 55 or 60 pages, but it, it goes through all the stuff that's going on in LinkedIn, very detailed in terms of how to post, what to post, so on, and what things to avoid. Uh, I did a webinar on, on the high points on this, and I guess about a month and a half, two months ago to my membership group. And uh, people were just were shocked uh, because we, we keep doing things the same old way in LinkedIn. And that's gonna get you, I think get you in trouble. It's an opportunity cost that, that will, uh, will cost you in the end. So in terms of uh, what's happening in LinkedIn, and, and I will give credit to Richard for this. This is less than two weeks old. And he has a team of people worldwide. And quite frankly, I'm hoping to become a featured speaker in his group. I'm, I'm supposed to give a talk to his group uh, in, a, in another couple of weeks, uh, just about how to use LinkedIn events. And this came out again a couple of weeks ago, the top 15 LinkedIn features of 2022. Now that doesn't, that doesn't relate to 2023 other than if these make sense to you to use, use them, and it will affect your business in 2023. And I'll cover some other stuff at the end around that. The first is, and uh, Naomi, I think I just I think you just did a post on this, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, I did. With content templates. Mm. Now these are only available on mobile. I have I can't use them on on my uh, computer, but I think it's pretty cool and. Uh, and then you can you actually create templates for people? No, I don't do that. No. <laughs> okay. Well, the point is you can use you can use a template, and I use them. I've I've done a couple of them, and I don't create templates. I'm not a graphic artist person at all. But one of the other features that uh, and I and I don't have a slide on this. You just want to make a note on this is that you can actually create a post with an image in it, and you can have a hyperlink within that image. That is huge. Uh, LinkedIn, as you may be aware, this has discouraged for several years anyway, for years, the use of hyperlinks in your posts and so on. This is the first time that this has happened. And you create an image post, and, and I mean, if anybody has questions on it, just you know, let me know, message me, and I'd be glad to take you through it. 
I'm not a professional at this by any means, but I, I did an image post for my uh, last LinkedIn masterclass and had about 40 people who clicked through and registered. Uh, that's, and I, well, anyway, that, that, that works. And it's very, very cool. And uh, it's tied into the content template. You have to take a photo, upload it in the template section, and uh, just, just go back to what Naomi posted on earlier. I think it was earlier this week that I saw that, but this is kind of cool. And, and, I, and I think the, the, the neat thing about it is, and, and unfortunately, again, it's only available on mobile, which is a challenge for me because I don't use my phone to do much on LinkedIn, although I'm using it more because some of the features I'll be sharing today are only available on the mobile device. And here, here's another thing that's kind of cool. And I believe this is only available on mobile. I have not used this. I will share with you. Uh, this is brand new. And I, as we're going through this, is there anybody here who has who has not converted over to creator creator mode in LinkedIn? Don't be embarrassed, but if you have not converted over to creator mode, and I'm not going to cover why you want to, I've talked about that on previous talks. Do that immediately. Uh, when when LinkedIn rolled out creator mode, I think it was September of 2021. I, I took a little time to get started, but the, the issue is that many of the new features that LinkedIn is rolling out are only available to you if you have creator mode turned on. And again, I, I won't say that I completely understand uh, this format. I believe, again, it's only available on mobile, uh, but anything you can do to, as it says here, increase the ability, visibility of your posts, of your topics, uh, and make it easier for your user, do it and again comes in as it says here comes in the in the in the two tabs the posts and experience and it, it just looks very cool i have again I, i'm going to be working on that this weekend because as i find things that i'm not using i'll always tell you that i don't use them or haven't used them yet at the same time we'll start and we'll test them for myself number three is the focused inbox on your messaging. Now, you, you, it took a couple of months for this to be rolled out com completely across the LinkedIn community. Became aware of it last September, I think it was, and they were rolling it out. And the way LinkedIn rolls out new features, everybody doesn't get it at once. And in fact, there's one I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit later that's still in beta format. You may get it and you'll notice it when you get it. But if you go to your messages section, both on desktop or you know, you know, laptop or your phone, you'll see that those two tabs, the focused and the other. And if you're anything like me, you get a number of spammy messages. I don't mean inbox messages, but just messages that come from people. I have no clue who they are. And quite frankly, I don't wanna to talk to them. And so you have the opportunity when you tap that button up at the upper right, right here, you can organize that inbox, and I will share with you that I'm probably sending 20% of the messages I get to archive or block. I'm blocking them. I don't, I don't need to hear from them. It just gives you a lot more flexibility. And the bigger your network gets, the more active you are on LinkedIn, you'll see your message inbox will just fill very, very fast. And it can be very, for me, it's very frustrating to not have a tool to control that and to make it do what I want it to do. And so I've been using this for about a month and a half and it's phenomenal. Again, go to your messages section on LinkedIn, focus to another and when you click that button, you'll see the options you have and you can do whatever you wanna do with them. You can read them all if you'd like to. I don't have the time myself. This is pretty cool though. I think LinkedIn is becoming more aware of the issues that we as users have. This is, this is pretty much brand new. You can schedule a post, and this is again available on desktop and mobile. Many people I talk to and many of my members and so on, people I'm coaching, say I just don't, I have a hard time getting going on my content, keeping a regular schedule. I post three days a week. 
through uh, as, as, through what's something called the post parties. But I'm going to start using this to schedule my posts. I, I, I mean, I'll write them out at the beginning of the month, and then I can I can schedule I can do you know 12, 14 posts in an afternoon, and just get them scheduled so I don't have to be concerned or worry about, oh, did I get that done? Did I not get that done? I think this is pretty cool. And it may work for you. It will certainly save you some time, I believe. And again, available on uh, mobile and, and uh, desktop. Down at the bottom of your profile is a section called skills. And Naomi, I can't remember, what, what do you have, 50 skills you can write? I think it's 50. I'm not sure the number, actually. I think there's a max number, 50, uh, something like that. But you can just list them. And you go to the skills section when you go in, when you're going to edit your profile, and you'll see what's available to you. This is not, to me, what I call a high priority, because many people don't even know that it's there. Uh, they certainly don't page all the way down when they're viewing your profile. At the same time, it's an opportunity for you to do more than just talk about it. You can record a video and include it in that skill section. You can even do a little bit of write-up. And it's a way to differentiate yourself. So you can demonstrate, you can prove your skills. Remember that LinkedIn is a search engine. And many people are going to find you through searching. And yeah, I'm not going to talk about how to optimize your profile and to make that all occur better. I don't have time to do that today. But when they find you and they go down and look at your skills, you have an opportunity to share a little bit more about why you are an expert as part of the expert economy. I wanted to give you a little plug there, kiddo. Well, that's fine. Number six. The bot buster button. This is so cool. There is a tremendous amount of, I'll call it spam going on within LinkedIn from fake profiles. People are using AI to create profiles. I probably get 10 a day connection requests from people. And, and quite frankly, most of it's from China. Um, and and uh, it's, it's the name of a guy and the picture of a lady. And, and that's 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 scam. That's that's not a real profile. I will share with you that LinkedIn has, as they reported in their community report last, I think it was October, they are removing 95% of the profiles that are spam. But those 5% that still sneak through, um, and of course it's all AI generated, uh, it's frustrating to me. And I like this button. I heard last fall they were going to be coming out with this. It, it now is live, where you can actually go and see if a profile is verified. You click that button, and, it, and again, it gives you options of what you want to do. Most of them, I just remove it, I, or I, I report or block it. I will not accept connection requests. I'm getting to the point where it's probably only half the connection requests I see are real, particularly if there's no message with it, which, by the way, is a, a hint, a suggestion that if you're requesting connections from people, always include a message with that. Don't hit the default thing that just sends the message request with no message. Personalize it to a degree. So this is pretty, again, I, I'm really excited about this. I know it's going to save me a lot more time. Because as you see here, it says verified info. And if it's not verified by LinkedIn, I probably am not going to accept it. This is something that's brand new. Um, and I, I've given the URL here. Um, you know, in your announcements section, you will see notices from people, job changes, birthdays, work anniversaries. It's very important, I believe, from a relationship building perspective to comment on those. So, you know, wish, wishing somebody a happy birthday, congratulations on your job change. And it's not a long drawn out message, but you can see here how to get there or maybe go back and scan the code. 
here's what it looks like. I actually did this. When you go to that URL, this is what pops up. This is what popped up on mine this morning. And so I just click down through. These are job changes, birthdays, and work anniversaries. And so I'll go back in over the weekend, and I will send a message to everybody on everybody in there in terms of job changes, birthdays, and work anniversaries, because you just never know. And as I share, almost every time I teach, you're only one phone call away. You're only one contact away from somebody. You just never know. And some of you may be aware I do a uh, bi-monthly masterclass workshop training. I'll just share a quick story from the training I did in November. I, I don't know, I had a couple hundred people who registered and were on, not everybody was on the, on the, on the three calls, but I got a message on Thursday afternoon after it was over from a fellow who actually scheduled a call with me. And I didn't know who he was. Uh, he had registered for the event. And we had the call on Saturday. And he said, you don't know me. His name is Scott Samuel. He says, John, you don't know me, but I was, I'm, I'm LinkedIn user number 12. That got my attention all the way back to the beginning. Reed Hoffman, founder of Lincoln, had personally invited him. Well, Scott, Scott's been around the internet a while, uh, developed the first measurement system for uh, PayPal. And that was a whole business, sold it for, I don't know, 30 or 40 million. And uh, he just helps companies get together today. So anyway, that got my attention. That was, the, that was one of those calls that, Again, you just never know. But well, we're actually working together this year because uh, he likes the way I do my stuff and I certainly like him, he's a good guy. So just pay attention to this because you just never know. This is another very cool thing, the, the pin comment button. This was just added. And as you are probably or may be aware that when you post, you do not want to include external links in your post. You will get penalized. And a warning will come up uh, for to people who uh, actually want to click on that link. But LinkedIn just added this where you can actually make a comment or write a comment and include that external link in the comment. I've been doing that for about two years. The challenge is that that comment just continues to go down, 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 down as you get more comments on your post. You now, have, you now have the ability to pin that comment to the top of your comments so that when people come and view your post, they'll always be able to see that in the case of an external link right at the top of your comments section. And that will improve performance, I promise you. And again, it just it shows up. You can when you make a comment, you'll you'll see the options you have and I was looking for about a month for it to show up after I heard about it, but it now is uh, now is there. And again, that works on both the mobile and desktop. If you are in creator mode, you will, you will get additional and improved analytics on your posts. And it just shows up in your profile as you page down. You click on the analytics section. Again, it's just it's private to you. And it lets you know how many people have looked at your post. And it, it lets you drill down. You can, this is this says seven days. You can actually go back 365 days. Why this is important is as, and by the way, you can also then do engagement. You can see how many people commented and how many people liked. And if you're trying new things uh, in terms of posts and you want to see if your posts are working, well, this gives you the ability to find that out. You don't have to guess anymore. So it's real important to know how many post impressions you're getting and then as importantly, if not more importantly, the amount of engagement that you're getting. And it's all right there. Again, only if you're in creator mode. I've talked for probably a year. I know I've talked on this call before about the bell button, which shows up right underneath your banner graphic on your profile, both on mobile and 
on desktop. Now you can't see it. You can't see yours. That's the unfortunate thing. But if you go to my if you go to my profile, for example, you'll see the bell right underneath it, and click the bell, and you'll see every post that I do, or at least you'll get notified about it. And I use it. The way I use the bell is there are certain people as I'm building my network that I want to follow. I identify I want to follow them. So I click their bell. And now I'm notified about every post they make. Why is that important? Well, when I'm trying to expand my network, and as you're trying to expand your network, I will want to see what they're writing and then I will comment on their posts before I ever reach out to them. And then when I reach out to them, I will say, something along the lines of, I've commented on several of your last posts regarding blah, blah, blah. I think it probably makes sense for us to connect. And it's just another way to make it easier for you to comment, view and comment on people's posts that you want to follow. And again, this is available on both your business page and your personal page. And personally, I've got to get more focused. I've got three business pages. I've got to get more focused on doing that for my business page also. But don't don't be concerned if you don't see it on yours, uh, because <laughs> you'll never see it on yours. Only other people can see it on yours. If you use page admins, if you use admins to, to, to work on your page, this is more appropriate for them. It will save them time. Uh, this feature, this page content analytics, when they click the, the show stats button as admins, I don't use an admin for any of my LinkedIn stuff. But if you use admins, be aware of this and it's something you probably want to have them look at and use. We're all familiar with the like button. One of the things I was unaware of until last November was that LinkedIn gives you other options. You, you can like it, but there are other things you can do with it. And if you like it, that's get, uh, from the standpoint of the algorithm, that gives your post a certain amount of, uh, I guess, I don't know, the priority is not the, the right word. The point is, if people respond in different ways, it increases your score. And this ha ha, ha ha button, that one right there, just came out. I've not used it yet, but you may want to consider using it. I don't, I'm, uh, I guess that means, yeah, I agree that it's funny and so on. Um, more appropriate, maybe for personal content, but be aware that it's more than just the like button, you have these other button options when you're looking at people's posts. This is something I just found out about. Most of the time when I see a post, I'll comment just from my personal profile. But you'll notice that drop down right there, that little arrow gives you the opportunity to comment either person as your person from your personal profile or from your business profile, your business page or business pages if you have more than one. And there may be reasons for you to do that. I'm, I'm st starting to use this myself for my uh, improved together business page. The company page activity filter. If you go to your business page, you go all the way out to the right, you can click on activity and these are the filters. Let you know who's doing what. And quite frankly, will allow you to reach out to people who for example, or commenting on your post from, again, from your business page. And as I said, improving your brand advocacy, I think it's a way to really get focused in on commenting to the right people. And you can see the different reactions. I, I, I'm just beginning to use this a little bit, so I don't have a lot of experience with this. This is fairly new. And this is upgraded, the comp competitor analysis dashboard. And again, you'll see this from your business page. 
But if you go over to analytics on your business page, you go down and click on competitors, you can see who's been active on your page. And you can even block certain people from seeing your business page. So it's, it's all about, again, giving you more information to use as you're building your business. Now I've got a couple of bonus items I'm gonna talk about. And these were, I think to me, two additional things that are so significant. I'd be remiss if I didn't share them. And I've shared this, Naomi, uh, in, this, in this meeting before, but the, you now have the ability in your profile to include a hyperlink. I can't remember if you have to have career mode involved or not, but if you go over to edit your profile, over on the right side, over here on your profile, the page all the way down, you'll see the ability to include a hyperlink. Why would you want to do that? Well, my call, my main call to action is for people to schedule a call with me. And you can see the language I use. So I have my Calendly link in that button, that, that box, and I also included this text. And I'm going back in about every two months and changing this just to see how it's working. If you do include that, and I recommend that you do, I'd also in, in, uh, recommend including uh, a, a link tracking device or link tracking URL so that you can actually measure how many people actually click on it. But I've had three or four calls scheduled in the last month, even during Christmas, Christmas, uh, the month of Christmas, December with Christmas, to schedule calls. And you know, I'll do that all, all day long, as long as I can. And the last bonus item, I just learned about this, is, is to include a call to action at the bottom of your posts. Here's mine. Every post, I, I just started using this about a month ago. I include this at the bottom of every post. And why I want to use this is you have to remember that when people are reading your post, many people that are coming to LinkedIn don't know what to do. You are the Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you will. You're the guide. So you can take people through and tell them what to do. And, and by the way, I'm just going to page up your cover story video, that 30 second video that you can include right there. If you go to my page, you'll note that at the end of that video, I say, want to find out how I do this? Go down to my featured section and click on that first video. I'm guiding people what to do. I'm tell, and in a sense, telling them what to do. Don't assume that people know what to do when they come to your profile page. And by the way, this is only if you're, if you're serious about using LinkedIn as a business tool. And I understand not everybody necessarily is, which is fine. But that little message right there, like this post, want to see more? ring the bell at the top of my profile. I'm telling them what the bell's about because most people don't know what the bell is about. I have an arrow on mine. I'm, I'm uh, adding text to the graphic that says, click the bell to see all my posts. And then last, the next one is follow my hashtag and then connect with me. And I've got to dress this up. I understand that, but I want to get the message out there on every post. And the only that's it. I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know my next, my 18th actual uh, free LinkedIn post and post exposure masterclass workshop is next week. One's from four to five Eastern, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I've included the link in the chat. And I have record registrations this, this, this time. I've had a long, uh, about six weeks to promote this on LinkedIn. Plus more or less. So the cool thing, uh, people have told me it's cool, is that I record every session and then send those out along with all the attachments that I talk about during the uh, presentation. I get into a lot of detail on LinkedIn. I don't know how many. Naomi, Naomi, you've attended that, haven't you? Or registered? I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, I've attended it before and I've registered this time as well. Yeah. So I want to just invite you to do that. Join us. I have a lot of fun. My style is pretty uh, low key. And I will be getting into a lot of a lot of new stuff that's that's coming out and, and you know, just due to time limitations today, wasn't able to. 
and I'm working this weekend on putting them all together. There, there are some significant changes coming with LinkedIn next uh, this this year, rather 2023. One of which is the way your profile is going to be seen. I just I just know that's going to change. I have I've seen some preliminary stuff on that. I don't know any details. But when it comes out, you'll you'll be aware, and uh, just you won't stay on top of it. The challenge today, and I mean I have a big challenge because this is all I do. All I do is LinkedIn. It's changing so fast, it's difficult for even me to keep up. And there are things you can do, you know, for example, that link, putting that hyperlink in your profile, that's a big deal. When I talk to people probably five months, five, four or five months after that was implemented and they didn't know about it. And you just, you wanna take advantage of everything LinkedIn can do. Because LinkedIn, in my opinion, is really making it easier for us to do business and to have people reach out to us. And Naomi, I think that's it. Great. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, if you want to stop sharing your screen, we can see everyone's faces easier, I think. Um, so we are going to go to breakout room shortly, but has anyone got a pressing question they want to ask right now uh, before we go and discuss it with each other and then come back and ask questions? Yes, quick one, Naomi. I uh, see yeah. the timing is at Eastern time. Uh, what does that make it UK time? Five hours difference. Thank you, John. Thank you. That's why I have That's quite <laughs> I've got, I've got a, a number of people from the UK who are already registered for that. And they know some, some people stay on until at nine. And I admire them. Others just say, I'll watch the recording, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Cool. Um, I think there was a question about uploading your own templates um, to the, um, the posting, but I assume you just do that as a photograph, your own templates as a photograph, and then put it on. Say, say again, Naomi? Uh, you know, if you want to put a branded template up and put your comment and then your lit hyperlink out, I think you just put that as a photo, don't you? Um, that is correct. Photos in your phone, so you just use them, put that in, and then... Because you can't add a template template per se, but you can use a photo. And so I think that photo. answers one of the questions in the chat. Has anyone got anything just regarding, I know I've got a big question for John actually, around events and how events are being used. Um, but has anyone got anything on what he's already discussed that they want to quickly ask, how do you do that? What did you mean? <laughs> yes, quick one, if I may sort of butt in again, but how, how do we book for that? Uh, did you put the link in the chat, John? I, I don't know if you have. Yeah, it's in the chat. But just read, put it in there if, if you're all right with that. Yeah, he'll put the link in for you. Thank Michael. you. Thank you. Um, Mina, I saw your hand go up then. Yeah, it was just, um, I kind of missed when you were talking about, you know, the, your profile picture and adding a video. You said, I, I, I can't remember what you said. I know it's to talk about what you do, but can you just repeat what you just said? Thanks. Yes, you have the opportunity to create a 30 second video. Yeah around your profile picture. And you do that on your phone, by the way. Yeah. So if you go to your profile on your phone, click click your picture on your phone and it'll say, you want to add a video? Yeah, I, 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 I know that bit, but you said something else and I can't remember what it was. Yeah, um, what he said was, is tell people what you want them to do. So at the end, he says, okay, go to the feature yeah. section and click on the first post. Yeah, okay. That's, that's what I do because I, I, I want to guide people through my profile and not presume they know what to do when they come in. Yeah. If that answers that question. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, right. We're going to go into breakout rooms in 10 minutes. I'm going to recreate. So you're going to meet new people um, and then um, start, yeah, discuss what you've come up with here and uh, start formulating what you, any questions you might want to bring. Um, if you do end up in the breakout room with John, let's not um, bombard him with questions and uh, make him have a private session with just you guys. Save your questions so that he can answer them all um, with everybody. Um, so yeah, pretend yeah. I have to figure out how you do that. Okay, cool. So good chats, everybody. Everybody enjoyed who they spoke to and what they came up with. So we still obviously got John with us. So has anyone come up with some new questions that they would like to ask John? We've just got about um, 10 minutes to, to be with him now. So um, would you like to use the put your hand up um, reactions button on Zoom to say if you've got a question? 
that's an actual physical hand but yes you're the only one putting your hand up Sina, wow. so you can go for it but do put your um yeah there we go yeah so then you're in the queue so Seema do you want to so am I saying your name right? Is that yes, your correct. Yes, see my John, just a very basic question, probably as a daft one. You know, I kind of don't use LinkedIn as much as I should, so I'm just kind of starting on my own. Uh, most of the features that you're presenting, is it kind of for, is limited to the basic users, right? Because I don't have professional ones. I'm having a hard time understanding you, Seema. Uh, Most of the features that you were just talking about is not available to the basic LinkedIn users. When you say the basic LinkedIn user, free. She means are, are oh, all the free. features you just yeah, talked about are they free to all free users? The premium. The premium. Okay, excellent. I need to upgrade. Thank you. No, no, they're not. No, I don't think that was the answer. So, John. Most of the things you just said are available to the free user, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. You okay. have to be in creator mode. Creator mode is free. Most of them, you uh, there are certain things you have to be in creator mode for, but most of them are are are, are not tied to the premium or navigator account. Yeah. Yeah. So you can stay on the free account. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Cool. Um, Joanna. Thank you very much. I just wanted to ask, there was um, one of the ladies I was in the room with, Layla, I noticed that she has a really big LinkedIn following, and I have a good couple thousand people on there. What advice would you give to someone that wants to engage more with LinkedIn and more with their connections when they have a lot of connections? What's the best way to go around it? You mean, uh, if I understand you correctly, Joanna, how to increase the number? No, how to engage better with the large number you already have so it doesn't seem overwhelming. Sure. Well, uh, first, if there are people that you are connected with and you want to engage with them more, you know, go to their profile and, 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 and click the bell and follow them and see what they're posting. Comment on their stuff. And I, and I neglected to say, I will not send a connection request, for example, to somebody because you have the ability to see if they have been active on LinkedIn within the last 30 days. If they've not been active, I'm not going to, re I'm not going to comment on them because they'll never see it. They're not on LinkedIn, but it's more, it's more taking the proactive approach of commenting on their activity, on their posts. Do that two or three times. And I, I've got probably an 80% acceptance rate when I do that. That's great. Thank you. Okay. So Brenda? Yeah, I think mine is more about, um, you know, the algorithms and people, even though I've built up my following in the last year and connections, I don't think, you know, I check my figures and it, I don't get very many people or as many as I'd like seeing my posts, you know, so it's been quite depressing sometimes. Um, so you were mentioning some of the features and particularly the one, maybe the templates. Are you saying that by using, because you said something with the template that you've got a lot of people interested in one of your offerings. Well, Is it because I, you think they'll be seen more? Will LinkedIn show those to more people or are you just saying it's because it's prettier, people might see them more? Might. And then I'll get into, I get in next Tuesday. Uh, I think I cover it next Tuesday. I go into the LinkedIn algorithm and a fair amount of detail. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That'd be really interesting. And um, thank you, John. And um, my question is because I am next in line. By the way, I just jumped in. Um, the my question is, how can you? What are you doing at the moment to really take care, advantage of um, LinkedIn events and get more attendees to your events? LinkedIn events, I think, are the eighth wonder of the modern world. Um, and I've got, in fact, I've got a whole webinar I've done on them. Uh, Naomi, I'll, I'll send that over to you. Uh, okay. I've been using them for a good year and a half. And I will just share with you that before I started using them, well, I get record. Again, our numbers keep going up each time I do the uh, do my master class because I'm promoting it through LinkedIn events. But I would just go 
search on LinkedIn for LinkedIn events rather than get into a whole lot of detail today. Uh, you want to always schedule them through their through your business page mm -hmm. because that gives you the ability when you do that to download the contacts, which gives you the ability then through your CRM to email people and, and remind them to show up. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, you'll probably get a 5 to 10% show rate, whereas today I get probably 50 to 60%. You're doing that manually. Um, well, I have a, I, it's all automated. I mean, I use an automated CRM system. You know, from, yeah, from, from that you know, side, yeah. But you have to manually download them in, in the, you, I do it once a week. Yeah. The other thing is, is put your event far enough out so that you can invite your all your first degree connections. Uh, LinkedIn limits you to a thousand invites per week. Always starts on Sunday. So if you've got 4,000 connections, first degree connections, you know, I would schedule my event four weeks out. I do all my events in Zoom, by the way. I don't use LinkedIn Live or any of those things. But they work. I'm a big proponent of them. And yeah. certainly for my business. Yeah, I'd love to read, hear all your wisdom on that because there's all some stuff that's really intuitive and I've been using the wrong time, but then if there's more stuff to you could be doing to promote them, then obviously it's worth using them. So yeah, I'd love to read, listen to that. Yeah, Thank you. with LinkedIn events, and I'm, you, I'm sure you all see the note in your notifications, you'll be invited to an event mm. and you may yeah. say, quick, yes, I'll go. The reality is, if you're like me, I don't remember what events I register for. And if I don't get a follow-up, you know, if there's not some type of follow-up system, remind me and to put it in my calendar i won't go yeah yeah absolutely okay cool thank you laurent what's your um question thank you i actually have uh, two questions uh my first question i don't know if the i don't know if you can tell me uh some of the features are not available yet at least for me like the uh, scheduling post is not available do you know when and how long do you usually take for linkedin to roll out to uh, to all countries did Jen oh, yeah. go ahead. Well, let me answer that question. That's a very good question. New features may take up to two to three months to be available to everybody worldwide. Okay. And the, <laughs> it's frustrating sometimes because I just have to keep going back in and checking on um, every two week basis and see if it's available to me. All right. Okay. And so second question, but maybe you have already answered it. It's about, I, I wanted to ask you about the importance of a business page. Because already like, having, well, how, how important it is to have a business page? Because already having a personal page is already like a lot of work. Uh, plus a business page that doubles, you know, the amount of work, especially when you're a solo owner like myself. I think it's, uh, I, uh, I guess it all depends on your business. If you're going to do any LinkedIn events, uh, you definitely want to do it. You need to have a business page. If you go to my business, and I've got three different business pages, and I know I need to go in and work on them more. Uh, they're pretty basic. They're not no much, not much detail uh, in terms of if you compare it with my profile, my personal page. But I believe that business pages in 2023 are becoming more important than they were in 2022 or 2021. Can I just answer into that question as well? Um, they are important in terms of putting your logo on your profile. So they're worth having mm. for that reason. Um, and then also telling people a summary of what the company is and how to get involved with a call to action as well in case somebody lands on it. Um, and then when you are posting content, not everything you post will be relevant for your company page because often you say I, and you might share something personal. But when you are sharing content that's real thought leadership, um, on that topic, double it up and pop, pop it on that page as well. So at least there's stuff going through. And then when you do use it for an event or somebody comes through via the logo, at least they're seeing it's populated and something's going on there. Um, but it's not, personally, I don't push it massively for a company page um, and followers because it's my voice, my thought leadership that people are after. And they'll remember my name before they remember my company name. So it does depend where you sit, like Microsoft and people with lots of 
um, companies with lots of followers, it's about following the brand, their company page will be very, very important because they want to hear what Red Bull's saying um, or what Apple's saying. But it's who is it that they want to hear what they're saying? If it's you, because you're the thought leader, then it, your personal profile is the one that's most important. But you just want it there as a backup um, as well. So I hope that's you agree with that, John? No, I agree with that. And I will say this also, the one thing I, about your company or your business page, one of the new features that LinkedIn added last year is the ability to put in forms on your business page, like a web form. And, that's the, and, and it's very basic, by the way, but it's another way. You can't do it on your personal page, but you can certainly do it on your business page. Yeah, what what do those good. web forms do? Well, if, if you have a, a report, for example, that you want to offer people, they can get that from, through a form on your business page, for, again, for example. Okay, so really quickly, Thomas is going to tell us what his question is, um, but we are really running out of time, so it's going to be a very quick question, if that's all right, Tom, Thomas. Um, yes. Um, go for it. Um, what will uh, what will be the uh, course of action when I'm when I'm changing completely my profile? So it, I used to be a, a software developer, and now uh, I'm switching to an investor. Uh, what actions uh, or approach you you would recommend to switch completely and build up a completely different audience? Well, what I did, uh, and actually Naomi uh, helped me on my first profile, I think, what, two years ago, Naomi? Yeah, probably. About two years ago. And when I made the switch totally to LinkedIn about a year and a half ago, I went through and modified everything. Mm. That's the key thing, isn't it? Because Thomas and I are actually working together. I am actually writing to modify his whole profile. Um, and then again, yeah, it's about building up those connections in your ideal audience, isn't it? Um, and that thought leadership around what it is you're doing so those people are naturally attracted to you and want to to connect with you and join that would be the main thing wouldn't it yeah yeah cool um, i'm gonna have to move this foot on unfortunately uh, uh please reach out and connect with me or follow me i would just ask for that and just put a note in that you were on the uh, call this morning and i will go ahead and accept that yeah brilliant um, I'm just out of interest, could I have everybody just write in the chat what part of the world you're from? Because um, I'm just curious and what all the different countries are, because we've got quite a few. Um, so yeah, so um, coming up next time, we've got Vanessa with us and she's going to be talking about all the legal stuff that we've got to be aware of and keep on top of and answer any questions for us um, regarding that. And then on 3rd of February, we've got Sue and Grimm talking about hiring and managing virtual teams because as we all know, um, we can't do it all ourselves. And sometimes we go on Fiverr and we go on um, Upwork and places like that. And it's how do we actually find the right people? How do we keep them engaged and manage them effectively? And then on the 17th of February, we've got Claire Downham come and speak to us on getting things done despite how you feel. Um, this was inspired in our last session when um, Claire just made some declarations and I was like, oh, I need to hear more about this. Um, so I thought she was just, that would just be a great topic because I know I'm not the only one who gets tripped up by how I feel or well, the bad dream I had, <laughs> whatever. So um, yeah, so Claire's going to come and speak to us that on the 17th. Do make sure to um, follow the company page, The Expert Economy, um, to see events. I also, because you've been here today, um, you will be added to the email list to receive updates um, and you'll also get an invite for the next event as well. Um, so it is a good idea to make sure you've you have officially signed up so I can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Um, and I will get the recording for this sorted out and I will send it via the email as well. So do make sure you're on my email mailing list. If you're not sure if you are, then just send me a message, Naomi at theexperteconomy.com and I will do my best to make sure that you receive that. Mm -hmm.